One of the more confusing parts of trigonometry is the understanding of a radian. So in this video, what I want to do is cover our basic understanding of what exactly a radian is, how it relates to degrees, as well as some different ways that we can go ahead and write a radian in a different kind of forms. So the first thing I really want to kind of understand is like, well, let's kind of think about degrees. Like I think sometimes we kind of take for granted, like our understanding of degrees and you know, most students have a like their understanding of degrees, you know, typically when I think about degrees, they say, oh, well, we know that like the distance, like, or a circle has 360 degrees. But if you think about that, like, what exactly does that mean? And, you know, what does it mean for something to have 360 degrees? Well, it's important to understand, like, when we're talking about like angles, we're talking about measures of rotation, right? So if you were to kind of like take a radius here, and if you were to rotate this all the way around, right, that'd be 360 degrees rotation, like turning yourself all the way around. But we kind of come to this, you know, co like confusion a little bit. It's like, why this number, right? Why 360 degrees? Why did we pick that number or who picked that number? And why was it not 361 or why was it not a perfect 300? Like what is so special about 360 degrees? And that kind of comes into like our basic understanding of like what exactly is a degree and like where it comes from. But we kind of like forget about it, you know, especially as we're first learning because, you know, I don't know, 360 is kind of nice, right? And then we kind of say, well, half of that, right, is going to be 180 degrees. And then half of that brings us to our perfect right right angle, right, which is going to be 90 degrees. And then half of that brings us to our nice little uh, right triangle, which is, again, like that 45, 45, 90 triangle. So you can kind of see how degrees is makes things pretty simple, right? We kind of like degrees. It's you know, dealing with a lot of times integers. Um, and it's fairly basic to kind of like talk about them and like to understand what they mean. Right. But the problem is again, like if you go back to that original understanding, it's like why 360, why 360, right? What is, what is the measure? Like we understand the measure of degree is like a rotation, right? But why is, or degree is going to be one three sixtieths of a circle, right? But why 360? Now, there is a, if you go back and like kind of study the history and, and I kind of remember going through my undergraduate, you know, one of the things they talked about with 360 was to kind of measure the rotation of the earth around the sun, actually before people said that the sun rotated about the earth. Right. And so I think it was really cool. Like they used this 360 to, me to measure the rotation of a, yeah, of a circle. Right. And, and obviously there, you know, if you think about the days of the year, 365, you know, with a little bit of a decimal and we use leap year, right. To kind of like, to make that a little bit more, um, more exact. But the important thing that I want you to say is like 365 is not really a good number. 360 is a really good number, right? It's divisible by a lot of different numbers. So I think, you know, again, I'll, I'll let anybody in the comments that wants to, you know, further apply, like where the degree you know, came, came from or like a little bit more on the history. I think it's really, really important and really cool to kind of, you know, learn about like where this came from. But like, basically I would say it closely resembles, right. The, the measure of that rotation, like of, you know, the days in the year, which represented like a circle and then 360, it's very close to that is going to be very divisible by a lot of numbers. So please go ahead and check on the comments. Cause I'm sure some people have some additional information they want to add. And if you do, then please go and do that. So However, once I started learning more about this, again, I kind of got a little mad, like, oh, okay, that's kind of easy, but it kind of seemed like a little cop out. Like, oh, that's just an easy, quick number. Like, is there a better way for us to be able to measure, you know, rotation, right? So we have degrees, but it's just kind of like this nice made up number. And, and in fact, there is a easier way to measure and understand rotation. And that is where the radian comes into play. So if we go back to the circle, right, we know that all the way around is 360. Okay. Got that. But what I want you to think about is like a couple things we also recognize about a circle that I think is fairly, fairly easy for most students to understand is like the radius, right? And, and like circumference. So the radius is the distance from any point, right? Uh, and I'm sorry, is the distance from any point in the circle to the center of the circle. And the circumference is the distance all the way around. Now, the way that I always like to kind of explain this to my students is let's go ahead and take the radius. Let's pretend this is like a hard noodle. All right. So here's going to be my hard noodle radius, like from the center to that point. Now, what happens when you take like a hard noodle, right? And you drop it into boiling water, it becomes nice and, you know, flaccid, like you can mold it, right? So let's go ahead and take this radius and let's wrap it around the circle. Now, this little measurement here, right? Which we call, it's like the, um, is what we call like an arc. So this is actually going to be what we call a radian. So this measure of rotation of one arc length is going to be this angle 
right? This measure of rotation is going to equal to one radian. So this distance, right, again, is what we call the arc. So we call that an S, okay? So when we're dealing with the radian, what we're basically dealing is it's the measure of rotation of one radius wrapped around the circle, which we call like the arc or the arc length here. So we can say S is equal to an R times theta. So when S is equal to R, that's what we have is one radian, okay? Now, so the measure of this rotation, right, of this radius wrapped around the circle here is therefore theta is going to obviously equal, you know, theta is equal to one radian, right? Obviously when theta equals one radian here, S is equal to R. So that is the measure of one radian. That is what we call a radian. And we just use the number one to represent that radian. Now, what about if we go two radians, right? Then it'd be a measurement of right on here, this measurement of rotation here, where you could say theta is now equal to two, right? So theta is equal to one in this case. And then what if we did three? Well, it'd be pretty close down here, right? It'd be almost all the way around the circle. And I always like bring out to my students, I'm like, wouldn't it be so cool if it's exactly three radians was halfway around a circle? Like that'd be perfect. That'd be so easy to like memorize, to understand. And like, we'd have the basic definition of radians, like, like down pat, like it'd be just as easy as degrees. It'd probably take over the whole world because radians would be so nice. You're just like, oh, it's three radiuses wrapped around a circle. And unfortunately, no, unfortunately though, there's this little sliver here, right? That does not actually match up. So we have one radian, two radian, three radians, right? Again, this is just these radiuses, these nice little wet noodles wrapped around the circle. And unfortunately, there's this little sliver here. And if you know where I'm going with this, then you know that little sliver is 0 0.1, 0 0.14, uh, 3.14159. 3 and I actually forget the other digits, but I'm sure you guys can all. 159. And um, no, choo -choo. no, why am I doing this? Sorry, three, it's point. One, four, one, five, nine. There we go. Right? So it's three radians plus 0 0.14159. And hopefully you guys recognize that, yes, that is the definition of pi. And that's what pi represents, right? Pi is going to be 3.1415 radiuses wrapped around the circle, right? So when you kind of think about pi, like, you know, a lot of times students, I always, you know, there was like circumference divided by diameter, which like to me, yes, it's correct. It like it, but it like never really made sense. And the way that I like to understand pi is like, think about it. Yes, you can call them like arc lengths. You know, it's the arcs wrapped around, you know, the arcs of the circle. But basically, it's the number of radiuses wrapped around the circle, right? And that's 3.14159, right? So there is going to be your sliver. And that is going to equal to our pi. So that is going to be our famous radian. So again, we kind of have two ways to represent radians. All right. So you can represent radians by kind of like saying, all right, one, two, three, right? So we go, here's one radian, right? So theta equals one, you could say, here's another radian, or here's two radians, theta equals two, or you could say theta is equal to three, right? Now, the other way though, you can, well, a lot of times we also think about radians is rather than just like in numbers, right? So how many times, you know, if you went down to here, let's say that'd be like four radians, right? So, you know, you'd say theta, is equal to four radians. But obviously I think why this never really took off um, because then you're mostly dealing with decimals, right? You can see that like, this is like the distance between each of those angles is pretty far apart, right? And so we can't really get really exact with our measurements. So another way that we represent radians is what we call in terms of pi. And this is gonna kind of go back into what we talked about over here, why degrees are so like helpful and so useful is that like I can easily you know, take the 360, divide that by, you know, two and I get 180, right? And you get 90 degrees. Well, we can do the same thing. If we know that halfway around a circle is pi radians, right? Then what we could do is we could cut that in half and we could say, oh, 90 degrees is going to be pi halves, right? And then if you could, if you wanted to cut that in, if you wanted to cut that up one more time, right? Then you could say from here to here is going to be pi over four, right? And basically all we're simply doing is just kind of breaking things up in terms of, in terms of pi. And you could say all the way around the circle is going to be a two pi. So those are some different ways to kind of understand as well as write pi. I hope it was helpful for you. If you want to kind of move into the next step where we're actually going to graph our angles in standard form, that's going to be the video I have coming up for you next. Cheers.